Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to use the time cert kit in order to restore the threads in the engine block so that we can bolt the heads back on properly and get a good seal on the head gasket. Should be pretty good. Ryan's Mobile One. Welcome to part four. If you missed parts one, two, and three, part one was showing how bad this thing was leaking. Part two was why it was leaking. In part three, I go over what comes in the kit, including the little things, and also what you need to add so that you can get this job done. In this video, I'm gonna take some big strides uh, for entertainment value or somebody who just wants to jump in, they can get it done. If you find yourself scratching your head near the end of this video and you feel like I left some things out, I can guarantee you they're in the video before this one. I'll leave a link in the end cards. Make sure to watch that if you have any questions. This plate is foundational, literally. You put this right onto it. This has to be flat with the block so that you get good consistent results and you can get in there straight. These dowels that line up the head are now in the way of the drill and tap guides. Chances are very good the same conditions that caused the failure are going to cause these to be really hard to remove. So you take your half inch drill bit and reinforce it with this and set your vice grip so that they're just off the deck. One other thing that you should have and that's a flat razor blade. There's no rib to it it's just like this. This has to maintain absolute flatness. You don't want to scratch it, score it, or create any kind of possibility for a leak. So you're gonna put this on over there to protect it and spread it out. This is like a snowshoe. Once you get this into place and you work it back and forth, the drill bit prevents you from crushing the dowel and makes for a successful removal. You may have to clean that up and get rid of the tooth marks or get it to sit flat again. When these things come out hard, you really gotta grab onto it, I'm not kidding. Once that's clear, use the same razor blade. A lot of people are gonna say, don't do that. But you see all this dust and powder that's coming off? I'm not getting any aluminum, I'm just getting the garbage from the old head gasket to come off and some corrosion. If you're getting into the aluminum, you are not helping. <laughs> Ralph from The Simpsons, I'm helping with his finger in his nose. Use a razor blade to just get the big chunks off. It doesn't have to be a perfect finish, just the, just the high garbage that got left behind by the head gasket. Once that's done, grab your tin foil or your aluminum foil, depending on what part of the world you're from. I got this big, thick, beefy stuff that's for grilling. We know that we're going to be working on this one and this one. So we can pull this one off and get away with that. This doesn't matter because this is thick enough. We're working above it, so our tooling and all that's not gonna matter. Plus, in this biggest, fattest hole that we put the dowel in, it's gonna be even stand, stood off higher. So we'll only have to pull this one. These threads are all good. These two are bad. How do you know if they're good or bad? Well, for one, if you have a stripped out head bolt, that's a good indicator. Check the ones that are next to the one that failed. This one didn't exactly fail. It was still holding pretty good. You'd probably get away with it. But when we look through there with a light, the threads on this one are extra rough. Given its proximity to this one, eh, I'm not gonna risk it, so we're gonna replace it. So we're gonna fold this around so that it's holding onto the head over the edges of it. People use all kinds of tape and duct tape, but that just creates more cleanup and it doesn't do as good a job. So we use aluminum foil. You're welcome. It's a really good idea. The other nice thing about this is it's really easy to find where your holes are and liberate them of aluminum foil. There's another reason why we use the kind of razor blade that we do because it's got that sharp corner and just poke into it. The main attraction is to cover these. Mission accomplished. Try to keep your cut to where you're not making multiple pieces of aluminum. You just want to be able to have one piece that falls out. Um, if you cut the bottom last, it's easiest to get it out. Ta-da! So we're going to take this and put it in here. And uh, we're just going to, I lead with this is what I do. It doesn't say exactly how you find it, but if you do. Make sure I don't have any extra aluminum to offset my hole. Make sure it's nice and flat. Looks good to me. I'm going to stick this in there. Yeah, it should. If you're in one of the dowel ones, it's going to go in pretty far. Like this is going to disappear on you. If you're on the surface of one of these, that's good. But the main goals when you're setting this is to make sure that your bolts are set up to where you can hold it nice and straight. So if I'm doing this one, I want to be on these ones. It's a half inch or 13 millimeter socket. And it doesn't say exactly how, how to do them as far as the torque goes. I just snug them up. I give them three ugga duggas. I'm guessing that that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 foot pounds of torque. It's 
spin this and spin this. If you can't spin it, then you're probably you're torquing. If you're torquing, you're probably not straight. I'm gonna take a little bit of WD-40. We're gonna be using a lot of squirts of that. Like that. Rest your thumb on it and just kind of wiggle in a circle and find the center. The more you can be straight and center, the better. All right, we are snug down. Pull that off, wiggle that off, put her back. There is a little gap between the end of this and the cylinder head when it's in here. It actually rests on this here. The next thing we gotta do is take some measurements. This is already measured for you. This is 38 millimeters. Then you take the tool from the kit. By tool, I mean ruler. Because this is in the metric system, we're gonna stay in the metric system. You can see it's millimeters on the bottom and it's inches on the top. This little piece of engineering is a measuring device and it's clever because it's got a little tension. It looks like they designed this off of a pen and just didn't wrap it for going around a pen. We take this, uh, we put in the guide and we stick this down in there and we just want to go diagonally and just skim the surface. This saves a lot of measuring and adding together. They give you the measurement 38 millimeters for that uh, dowel. Doing this you just get one measurement to get all of your bore drill, your tap and your install tool all set at the same depth. One quick measurement, no math. And I'm gonna hit right there. While I'm hitting there, I'm gonna grab the end of my ruler, slide that down, and then just settle it out, and take a look. This is our measurement right here, 90, 91, 92 millimeters. That's including the dowel. With our core drill, with our little shoulder cut out, that's what we need to know is how deep to go uh, to get this to land right at the first thread take our ruler and we put that against our thing where it's going to go and we should land right on that shoulder right at the top of the shoulder just first dropping off from being a large diameter to a smaller diameter you need another tool it's a three millimeter because that's what the allen is on this it's not included in the kit we're going to put this in there and it's going to drill down and then it's going to hit it's going to go through here and it's going to hit there and stop and when it stops this is going to be in the exact location of the first thread. When we look at our insert, you can see that it's got a shoulder on it. As you look at it, the threads go all the way to the top of here. So we're going to be replacing exactly where the threads are, where they begin, so they're in the right location. Make sure you do it right the first time. Do your measurements right. Like I say on this one for an EJ25, all of these we've checked and are all the same. On It won't be the same on every engine block, but all of these uh, the setting is 92 millimeters. That's including the centering dowel, so make sure to check it yourself. Don't take chances and drill too deep. Let's get going. Everything's centered. When I go to put this in there, it tracks in the hole just great. We can do this by hand or we can do it with a drill. If you do it with a drill, you got to make sure that you get this chucked up right because if you've got a three, uh, three chuck drill like most of them are, how the drill bit goes in between the three, and this is four and it's being froggy, it's going to mess with you and it'll be all wobbly and you won't get a good hole. We'll shoot for the stars and hit the moon. Hold things as tight and good as you can and you won't be sorry. So we're going to drive it with this. Do is you get your WD-40. It says so in the instructions and you just spray this guy. Just hit both sides of it. We're going to take about four passes to get this done. You can see it sinking in there. You see the gap between wing marks and this. That's all you get on this pass. So I'm going to pull back and fish it out, and we're going to blow it out with our compressed air. I tighten my three millimeter thing pretty good, so that helps when you go to pull it out. You can see all of the filings and stuff. See how they curl up inside that flute? That's where the WD-40 needs to be, is in those low spots. Must be Saturday filming. If you film on a Saturday, you can have a lot of noise. You can feel when you're done, it kind of packs out. There it went. So you just pull back on it. Still going clockwise. Should go counter. For whatever reason, it's hard to get it to come out counterclockwise. All right, do some more. This out here. Plunge and cut. I right, say so it'll take you a good three or four goes at it in order to get it to work. That one's starting to float, so we're going to pull it. 
The more that you use compressed air in between, the more crap gets on your camera lens. Gotta get a good clean image, gotta clean this lens. I got your back. But the faster you're able to drill. Still have a lot of WD-40 on there. Why WD-40? Why not cutting oil? Well, if you have stuff for aluminum, great. If not, then your cutting oil probably has sulfur. The reason is sulfur's bad for aluminum. Create all kinds of issues so people don't use it. They use WD-40. That's why Time Fastener Company, Time Cert, recommends WD-40. There are products you can use for aluminum, but they're pretty expensive. I like Bolube. I actually have some, but I'm just teaching you guys, so I'm doing WD-40. Do it how you guys would, right? When cutting threads, the stop means stop. In this case, when you get to the stop, keep going. Break off all of the different pieces, including your handle. You break off all the pieces in the bottom and that way it clears the hole. Use your combination square and just square it up like that. Tighten the nut down, check it. Then you can take your other ones and do them the same. And then just go right at the corner where this is. And if you're real fancy, hold it like this and spin it. Put that right at the corner. Just rotate that on there. But the way that these are designed is to have everything just end in the same spot. So when you drill it down in, this will uh, thread it all the way down there and your driver will go all the way to the end there. The driver is pretty interesting. It's, you'd think that you could just use a bolt or put your head bolt in the little insert and send it in with that. But this is a special design. You can see that it's kind of square. You can see the nodes on each corner. What they're for is they actually push out. And if you do it, you can feel it go kadonk, kadonk. Core drill and the shoulder lock in the top. Expanding the bottom locks the bottom in as well. WD-40 all over my floor. Another tool that's good to have close by is a trash can. Off camera, out of frame, I have a trash can that I'm relying on heavily. Take note of that. Alright, so this is in there. We get in there and give it a good start. Make sure that it takes and has some traction before you get crazy with it. You ever see these driven by a drill press and they just go for it? You want to take at least two passes here. These have some pretty big flutes so that it can catch the chips, but don't tickle the dragon's tail too much, right? All right, we are clean and clear. So this tap is unique because it's 1.25 pitch, I believe. I'll have to double check that. But because they have to sink the threads on the time cert so they can have that thin wall so you don't have to have a ton of material to work with and still be successful, which enables you to be a hero, basically. It enables you to be able to fix a hole that normally it would be a lost cause. You'd have to get a new engine block in this case. But it's just a bigger diameter, so I don't know if it's an M12 by 1.25 or what it is, but that's just how they roll. Bam! Kissed it. You can see this is the bushing. You see the cross hatchings. And then we back off from that. What happens if you keep going when you get to that point just because you want to snug it down? You're used to being a mechanic and snugger bolts. You will rip threads. <laughs> so when you get to the end, stop. <laughs> it's just like telling a story like the Mad Hatter says. Start at the beginning and when you get to the end, stop. This is called it's a stop. We're almost done, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. Our hole's full of WD-40, which is good for drilling, good for tapping, bad for red Loctite to stick. We need it really clean, so use brake cleaner, and then blow it back out with compressed air. 
So this is clean and ready to go. Now for the easy part. Take a time cert and we're gonna dress it up like it's a hot dog. We got condiments for it, that's what I'm saying. And it's also been marked. It's got the same mark so that when all of them are bottomed out, they all have a line going across. So we need to oil this. That's our first condiment. And of course it comes in a squeezy tube. This is like machining oil. And it probably has sulfur in it. That's why we don't use it for anything else on the aluminum. Just a guess. That's why gear oil stinks is it's got that extreme pressure lubricant. We don't like the smell of sulfur, but we love the lubricating properties that it has. We we'll take a red Loctite and we're going to add that to the mechanical spread that's going to happen. Cheap insurance, right? How do you get rid of red Loctite without ripping threads out? Uh, heat is the answer. So that's probably way too much. You just need a little bit. Knock some of that off. Just a little something to help it to not come out with your head bolts. Let's send it. It also goes through the bushing. Everything goes through the bushing. We just send that down in there. We've cleaned the hole. There's no oil in it. Went to our mark. And we're just going to send her in. It should go bump, but we're going to watch that black one in. It's starting to get hard. It's going to come up short, it hit the shoulder is what happened. It just hit it right there. And then now what's going to happen is I'm going to drive that installer in and it's kind of set like a square and these nodes are going to clean push threads and expand the bottom of that thing. That's why it's going to get real hard to turn right here. Watch that black mark, I'm not going to pass it. Because like I said, there's not a lot of extra threads at the end of this hole. So we've just cut through, we've just passed where it's easy, we're at the black mark, and we're going to back out. It's installed. Done deal for keeps. Time Cert is an American company. They're based in New York. they got an office in Nevada. And you can actually call them and order stuff. So if you've got a universal kit, in theory, you should be able to call them and get the Toyota kit, which would have a different installer and a different uh, tap. And then you'd be able to do that by the 1.5 certs that you have for Toyota instead of the 125 ones that we have here, 1.25. And you'd be good. All right, we're not done yet. We gotta test it. It's so exciting. It's opening a present. If you use duct tape, and especially if you took a while in between because you're nervous, you're going to have a lot of cleanup and sticky to get rid of. But if you use the tin foil, you can leave it on there for the whole process as long as you want, crush it as long as you want, and uh, no big deal. This one's sticking to some tape residue. I tried tape on this one, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's dumb, don't do that. Duct tape especially. That's some really good advice, this guy advice. <laughs> Just don't do dumb things, okay? Hope you have a totally amazing day. Take your head bolt, and the whole goal of this is to get centered and straight and have the thread start in the same place. Well, we can check if it's straight and right, if we have this many threads left. How many threads is it? It's about six or seven. So we check, and we bottom out six or seven, six or seven, six or seven. You don't want to chew them up, especially on your old aluminum one. And the dowel's in the way, but six or seven. So we've got four good threads here. We've got two amazing, stronger than factory threads here that are made of steel. It's pretty good. That's what we're looking for. We had a stripped out hole. We had an about to strip out hole. This one may have stripped out when I went to torque it down to the final torque spec, the plus 90, plus 180, whatever. And you add 90 twice, it puts a lot of stress on these things. I think it's upwards around... I have to check on the torque, digital torque wrench and see what it reads that out, but I'm guessing it's probably like 120, 130 foot-pounds. So, anyway, how exciting is that? Thank you, Time Cert Company, for coming out with such a cool tool that we're able to salvage these things and not have to replace the block. It's a lot, it saves a lot of time to do it this way, over tearing the block down and redoing the whole thing. And by the time you do that, it's going to save you a lot of money because you're like, well, while I'm here, I might as well replace the bearings. Might as well replace the piston rings. So this way you can contain it down to just being a head gasket job. They can or they can charge whatever they want for these kits. You can tell because they charge $500 for the kit. Holy crap, what? When you watch how they manufacture each tap special, supply and demand is what I'm trying to get at. And basically they're not going to sell a whole lot of kits, so they have to cost a little more. They're not gouging is what I'm trying to say. They're being somewhat ethical. 
So check in, of course, the tin foil worked. Don't have anything stuck in there to worry about. If you haven't seen my Subaru video about valves and stuff hitting and alignment and all that, be sure to check it out. It's in the end cards. Dude, we finally got it all back together. This is where it was leaking from. This is the oil pressure pipe. This is the new head gasket. It's a uh, Felpro Permandary Plus with a blue coating and a gold coating over blue coating. Hopefully it won't leak this time. And I've got a new time cert located right in this little channel right here. This is where the head bolt channel is. And it is probably located somewhere in the engine block like about right there. So to the end of it, it's like 53 millimeters down from here. So it's like right in there. And that's what fixed it. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. <laughs> I'm filming this intro and outro on the 26th of December to be posted on the 27th on Sunday morning. That's why I usually post. Usually about 8.15 Mountain Central time. That's where I'm at here in Utah. Uh, let's throw this door open, fire this up, and see how it is. All right, we're up. Before we saw oil coming out through the top and we saw oil dripping out the bottom really bad even after the thing was off. Let's see what we got now. When we look in there, the wire harness covers up where the oil leak was. You can see the channel for the oil to go across the top. And you can see the head gasket, copper colored. We've got a new catalytic converter in it because the old one was full of oil and antifreeze and was badly coated and had to be replaced. So when we go underneath, we used to see a little waterfall dripping through here of oil, or oil fall I guess you call it. And now I don't see any oil pouring out the tailpipe. Let's see what we got going on here. I understand that gray concrete doesn't show smoke so good. So we've got something black in the background. And it's cold. The ambient temperature before was 75 degrees. Right now it is cold. There's snow. You don't believe me? Show you. A lot of it, but got it. It's cold out. So there should be some steam showing, but there's really nothing. There's almost nothing coming out the tailpipe anymore. Whereas before, this is what it looked like. It is smoking pretty good. Thanks so much for watching, guys. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Um, uh, if you have any comments or whatever, don't be shy. I love to hear from you in the comments section. It's fun to help people. It's even more fun to help people with a story behind it, I guess. So let me know how you're doing. Uh, don't be afraid. I was afraid. <laughs> don't feel bad that you're afraid, but go for it. If you follow these tips, you'll have a really good outcome. So cheers. <laughs>